Hey everyone, I'm Prez, and welcome back to Cabrillo. Uh, this is episode 6. Last episode we built the, the park that you're looking at on the cancelled freeway in South Cabrillo. This episode we're going to be moving back across the river to downtown, and we're going to be working in this uh, area on the other side of the freeway. We're going to be building an interchange connecting the freeway to, well, two, connecting the freeway to downtown, and then also a district that used to be um, industrial and um, turned into a tourist district with wharves. Talking about wharves, here we are in Inspiration Station, the segment where we take a look at the inspiration for the episode, and we're in Seattle. This is the Seattle waterfront. My understanding is that a, a significant portion of these um, wharves were previously uh, industrial in some capacity. I don't know how they were. I don't know much about Seattle's waterfronts. I never actually got to build it in Columbia City, although I built a stacked freeway right where you see the construction site there that that actually used to be a stacked freeway until a couple years ago um, but the waterfronts become a lot more lively we're going to be doing something slightly different um, but i wanted to show you these especially because we're using seabuds wharves that were designed for columbia city but i never got to use them really like i kind of placed them down towards the end but i wanted to do them more justice here um, and also we have the embarcadero in san francisco which is just an amazing waterfront um, and it's definitely different from what i'm building but i still wanted to show it to you there used to be a freeway here as well but now look at it it's one of the most beautiful places in the country you could even argue it's just such an iconic place in the you know such a beautiful boulevard and yeah you know, we're, we're going to be doing something of our own here though um the district that we're going to be working on is definitively a industrial district um in cabrillo's history although um you know as cabrillo has grown and industry has declined it you know kind of transformed into more of a uh, entertainment district that is very popular with tourists but we are starting by building the um the freeway interchange here i go through a couple iterations a lot of it's off camera it was very hard to build because the freeway is so high off the ground um that's only because the uh it kind of goes up onto the hillside um behind the city but this uh this interchange is built on what was previously a rail yard which is you know there aren't even any remnants of the rail yard anymore it's very much been turned into um you know something completely different there's skyscrapers on the other side um however the the industrial district remains on this side of the freeway kind of showing that the freeway is it, it's a uh, kind of dividing line between one side of the city and the other and you know this east side of cabrillo that we're going to work on um, is going to have the freeway kind of feed into it but this really is the only you know urban freeway in cabrillo um at least in term you know urban freeway that really did take lands um from people and obviously there was one um across the the river that was kind of planned it was an extension of a uh, the freeway that had gone through the you know, the valley um, which we're gonna we're gonna kind of survey that in the future because I've, I've kind of figured out what the the names of each of these freeways is but maybe we'll discuss that further in an episode where I um, kind of give you a better overview because I want to focus on the build for now um, but yeah I mean th this interchange mostly went over a um, mostly went over a rail yard but uh, or a previous rail yard that was there but it you know, the interchange the freeway definitely displaced some people and displaced some businesses uh, but overall it was largely an industrial area so a lot of the buildings it displaced or that it removed were, were warehouses so residents were not necessarily displaced but you know some small businesses were lost in the um in the freeway project but you know definitely not as devastating as the freeway in south cabrillo that we built last episode could have been um if it had been built through all those those residences but you know once again this freeway here mostly going through warehouses although chinatown will be very nearby so maybe one of the you know some, some of the residences rather um of you know people who live in chinatown were, were destroyed in the uh the, the building of this freeway so we're kind of planning the road layout here for um the east side of cabrillo and the east side is kind of defined as the area on the other side of the freeway the freeway is really determines the way the city's um zones and kind of changed uses over time um, because even though there was some industry on the the other side of the freeway it was you know turned into hotels and you know various other and you can see right here I'm, I'm kind of working on the road infrastructure at the 
the, uh, well, I guess it would be the north end of east side Cabrillo. And this kind of connects up to the freeway. There's going to be some development up in the hills here just because it's so close to downtown. It really wouldn't make sense for the city to have conserved this land over its history. Yes, much of the industrial development and other development happened in, you know, in South Cabrillo, but um, it definitely was developed up, up into the hills, at least to some extent. It's not a perfectly, um, perfectly defined nature reserve, but there will be a, you know, a big urban park up in there. We're also building another bridge. I've been planning this bridge since the beginning. I just never built it because I hadn't planned the road layout over here, but it'll have a light rail line going over it. Um, the light rail line will connect into downtown. And as you can see, we're not going to connect. And there's going to be a rail yard, I believe, on the other side of that bridge, or at least that's the plan. I might place it elsewhere, but uh, I'm not, not quite sure of that yet. We'll see, but right now we're, we're working on the waterfronts that is going to become the main tourist district that we work on in this video. I'm placing these um, these wharves here, once again by Seabud. These were meant to be placed in Columbia City, and then I ended up ending the series right you know, before the episode that I was going to place them in. Um, so I really wanted to do them justice here, and I'm really happy with these. So there's an A, there, so that there's, a, there's Pier 1 and Pier 2 in terms of... There's, yeah, like there are two different pier models, but one of them has two different variations that have you know, different entranceways and stuff. So I placed all three of them here and I think they work pretty well together. I also placed a bike road, just a, a and this is one of the new Clus bike paths. It's just, it's just green. It's, it's a bike road. This road has been turned into a bike path right there on the waterfront. And then we're also having, you know, we have a, a fenced in like pedestrian path along the, the road here. You can see I've also placed like a modern library. I will be removing that. I wasn't, like I went, I honestly went into making this video, like I really want to develop this area. I don't really know what form it'll take. It's definitely going to have a history of industrial activity, but I don't know exactly what that'll look like. So this neighborhood here is going to be called um, the Steel Heart of Cabrillo. And that name was suggested by Koku. Uh, I'll leave the full story for this district on screen. I'll summarize it in you know the next couple minutes, but um, this was suggested over on the members only um, channel on my Discord, which um, you could get access to by becoming a patron or a YouTube member. And it's basically a channel where I kind of ask for suggestions and give updates and teasers and stuff while I'm building. And Koku has been really helpful over there. Um, so thanks to them and um, to everybody else over there who's you know given suggestions uh, in the past couple weeks. But anyway, this district here, the, the Steel Heart of Cabrillo, basically until the 50s, it was a you know, very important um, you know, manufacturing hub um, for various industry in this part of Cabrillo. But then uh, the highways came through and it slowly lost its prominence um, to other parts of um, the city. South Cabrillo started industrializing more heavily. Um, so this older historic core with all these smaller warehouses um, was kind of slowed down a little bit. And in fact, the, the rail yard that kind of ends under or used to end to the left of the screen there under the um, interchanges where that rail yard ended previously, it, it is it's gone now and um, now we have um, this this district that doesn't really have a rail connection um, it's mostly just these smaller um, smaller mom and pop you know warehouses and auto shops and whatever and um, the the remaining larger buildings in the waterfront here have been turned into an enormous tourist trap by a real estate developer in the 90s and um, uh, the piers along with them and just this entire stretch of land right along the waterfront according to a koku story has just been turned into a um very very um touristy place a, a tourist trap if you want to call it that uh, and it's, it's a really cool place to be don't get me wrong i mean like would you go here the title or, or the thumbnail rather um, asks that, but uh, I'd love to hear from you. Would, would, is this the kind of place you'd go if you were visiting Cabrillo? I'd definitely like to check it out um, and maybe get some food outdoors or something, hang out by the piers, but it's going to be covered in tourists. Um, and, you know, once again, they're kind of forcing out a lot of these other, um, these other warehouses as well. 
Although a lot of them are still left standing, there you know there's going to be a little bit of newer development here. The district is uh, gentrifying. Residents aren't necessarily being displaced, but once again, these smaller um, smaller warehouse owners, um, small businesses are maybe being displaced and definitely were displaced by the um, the freeway and the ramp that were kind of built here. And this east side of Cabrillo, um, is definitively industrial, and um, even though there was some industry across the freeway. You know, it, it was it was rezoned um, once the freeway was was kind of uh, built there, um, and you know, over here it's it's still industrial, and there's some shops as well, but not too much uh, residential stuff going on um, over here. It really is an interesting part of town, and I, I know we didn't get too much built. Uh, in this episode, like we're not going to be expanding this warehouse district, you know, far out past where we, where we have uh, built so far, expanding the you know, the extent of these warehouses. I um I I mostly just wanted to build the Iron Heart of Cabrillo over there. The the um which the Iron Heart of Cabrillo kind of refers to this area, but you generally just call this the East Side. The Iron Heart is the um the the waterfront, the the place that has turned into this. Um, this tourist trap and it's a name that has been around for you know for a long time to describe that you know that that specific waterfront area that was very um, important industrially but um, but the developers kind of harnessed it and it the name stuck around um, you know in in later on uh, in the city's history and that's where we are right now it's just it's become a hot spot in the town um, and definitely a main destination for a lot of people visiting the city and uh, you know part of Koku's story as well is that the real estate developers who you know, you know snatched everything up here um, they also rebuilt the waterfront by you know, building a bike path to connect to the city's existing bike path network um, and um, it was it's this road is uh, where the bike path is is still a public road but they financed all of the um all of the various um you know, paths and whatever here um even stuff that is still on on public lands and you know this waterfront's public land it, the the piers are not but the waterfront is that all of that stuff was financed um by you know these real estate developers and um it it's uh it's just a really interesting story for that for this district um and i'm kind of working on the uh, the wharves here right now um w once again there are three of them two of them look very similar because they're the same wharf with slightly different you know um details and definitely different colors one of them is red one of them is blue um but we're using the ronix the ronix uh pier networks these kind of uh, wooden boardwalk networks which i used in columbia city uh, on one project an amusement park and i was going to use more extensively on the waterfront but never got around to it I, I honestly i i just spent way too long um deciding whether or not to actually build the waterfront um you know the way i was going to and then i kept changing my mind and really i was just lazy because it was just going to be such a hard build and then finally these seabud assets came out and then at that point i you know was going to end the series just because it was lagging too much um but i really wanted to bring these back here and um show you all of these because i think they're excellent and i i, I really like these these buildings I wanted to showcase them here and i you know I, it's, I can imagine that um, they'd be the kind of thing that would be snatched up by those real estate developers we we were talking about, um, and I'd imagine you know once again restaurants, um, bars. You know, I'm kind of imagining that the developers who bought up the properties here kind of attracted um, with this you know the promise of this huge project it was almost like a self fulfilling prophecy. It, it attracted like the Hard Rock Cafe and various other tenants that really bring this area. Um, into into the forefront in the city, and and these wharfs here are going to be connected also on the top. So so this I'm using the Avania um, tiered keys here, and they they're really nice um, for for this because because the the mainland kind of on the top is is just way too high to directly connect to the uh, the wharfs. So I'm kind of connecting it with, and I'm imagining the topography here was a little bit different, and it was this is definitely engineered 
um, for sure, maybe partially by the developers, partially previously, but um, you know, th there's this lower level that connects to the uh, the the uh, paths, the wooden paths around the the buildings, but also there's uh, you, you might have seen the pathways that go to the upper stories of the buildings uh, directly from from the main main grounds. So. Um, that, that's for accessibility because otherwise they're just stairs and people with mobility issues would not be able to access the, the uh, development here. Because, I mean, this really is a development. Like, it, it you know, the, these previously served industrial activity before, but they, you know, they're, this is a development. It's a real estate development. You're looking at a real estate development here, whether it seems like it or not. Um, and we're finishing it off with some palm trees, of course, for that full tourist California experience. So we're back where we started in the last episode, or well, where we ended. We built this uh, this freeway park, the park on top of the canceled freeway. Um, I asked for some name suggestions, but I ended up deciding, after some consideration, going with my own name that I had initially come up with, which is Phoenix Park. Uh, kind of a silly name that somebody might have come up with. Not too deep, but um, the it kind of represents the, the Phoenix statue here, which is the city rising from the ashes and managing to cancel the freeway, saving this district. I also wanted to name this um, this star monument here, and, and Alan in the comments of a couple of videos ago gave an excellent suggestion, um, which was calling it Polaris, and that's because this peninsula has historically been a, um, a stargazing kind of sanctuary within the city. Um, even when it was industrial, it, you know, people would make it out here and just look out over the you know, the bay and um, stargaze. There's actually been a UFO sighting here even. But Polaris was kind of built as the, the state, this space age relic in Cabrillo. And you know, th this monument was built after the fact, after the whole space age craze, um, kind of as a you know, signature piece in Walker Park over there. But yeah, we also have uh, some signature places here in the, uh, the, the steel heart of Cabrillo. Um, like this this leftist building, which tons of different leftist establishments here. I'm imagining tourists from other states might come here very angry, you know, um, yelling at it, throwing eggs at it. And then we have Surf Ballroom, definitely an important um, venue in the city, maybe for music, for weddings, stuff like that might occur at Surf Ballroom. We have the Yesler Brewing Company, which is right below us with the PBR sign up above, which is so cool. I, I've wanted to place that sign for so long, and I, you know, this is the perfect place with that blue brewery below it. Um, so another thing is, I, I didn't really detail the, um, the wharves themselves too much and, uh, the, <laughs> I need to raise the entire district up by like a meter or so, just because there's water that just constantly um, floods onto the, the the walkway, and it just doesn't make too much sense. So I'm going to fix that. Don't worry about it. For now, it's just going to be there, though. Um, and that's kind of what the, the district looks like from above. And we're looking kind of from behind the Hard Rock Cafe now over at the bridge that we built. Uh, didn't really extend the bridge further across the um, what will be a rail yard, but we'll do that in the future. And, uh, yeah, this is kind of where it is situated next to the freeway. And, you know, once again, the other side of the freeway has definitely been rezoned for hotels, residential, stuff like that. Um, it's kind of the central business district, actually. So less residential, more office stuff over there where the warehouses used to be. Um, you know, once the freeway was put in, it, the warehouses were um, slated for removal. But the ones over here were kind of kept and, and kind of created East Side Cabrillo out of nothing. Um, like, East Side Cabrillo didn't exist before the freeway, or, like, it wasn't a name. Um, but now you have the East Side, and then specifically that waterfront area is the Iron Heart of Cabrillo. Before we close out the video, I did want to shout out some patrons who you know, became patrons, actually, in the last week, basically. So thanks to all you folks um, for you know, supporting the channel. BLG393, Brett Rosenblum, CJ Newton, Chappington, Naoyuki K, Sam Wobb, Simon Jia Chen, and Stan Schroeders, um, probably pronounce, mispronounced like five of your names, but thank you all so much for being patrons. And you know, if anybody's interested, you can get the save game download over on my Patreon. Um, tons of fun transportation themed tiers that I recently established over there. So if you're interested, head over to the description, or if you just want to contribute by uh, leaving a like and a comment, maybe joining the Discord server, following me on Twitter for urbanist content, quote unquote. Um, I hate the word urbanism, but whatever. Um, follow me on Twitter for stuff like that. 
But yeah, I really appreciate you tuning in. This was a really important episode. This is going to be a signature district in the city, the steel heart of Cabrillo. Once again, thanks to Koku for the uh, suggestions here. And thanks to everybody else for uh, for tuning in, staying till the end, because this is the end of the video. I, I got to I gotta log off now, but I really hope you follow us. Uh, follow along for the, uh, for the remainder of the series as we expand Cabrillo. Thanks to everybody for watching.